Oh, hi guys. How's everybody doing? I hope you've enjoyed Cherno's uh, stream. My game to, I don't know. Oh, it's uh, Cher Man the Science Fan. <laughs> Somebody came up with that in, uh, the other day. So, anyway, first of all, I've got a really tragic announcement. Like, it was nine degrees here yesterday. So uh, they actually oh, we want science. Oh, shut up. They actually uh, <coughs> postponed the bike Edmonton nude ride they were going to do. So can you imagine? I was going to go, but it was postponed because it was too cold. Yeah, disgusting. How could you possibly watch something like that? Ugh. The only thing I can think of, my God, like, uh, wouldn't it hurt? It could hurt, I think. You know, if it gets caught on the seat or something, that'd be horrible. Okay, <coughs> number one rule of this little science demonstration. Do not, once I tell you what I'm going to talk about, do not freaking spam uh, like a definition in chat because that kind of ruins it for everybody. So... Uh, and later on in this presentation, you will see how it applies to video games. <clears throat> so this is actually a video game oh, related. Man, we're learning. This is actually a video game related uh, thing. So we are today. We are going to learn. Okay, I can't see the camera, you don't so I don't need see. To. Well, fine. I do because I got to see what the hell, uh, what the hell chat sees. You're fine. We are going to learn about Bernoulli's principle. It's actually a very, very important scientific uh, discovery uh, by, I guess, like, I guess Mr. Bernoulli figured it out. There's a lot of math involved. Oh, get lost, you little shit. <laughs> I'm, it's fine. I'm being Keep serious. Going. I'm being serious <laughs> and you're fucking me over here. Terrible. Anyway, okay, that was kind of funny. My face is all red. So... Mr. Bernoulli figured it out. And what the definition is, I will tell you the definition. Oh, God. Yeah. That was funny. Uh-oh, I've lost the definition page. Uh... So what it is, I will read you the exact definition. As the velocity of a fluid increases, the pressure exerted by that fluid decreases. And this change in pressure, pressure is inversely proportionate. What that means, if the speed is high, the pressure is low. If the speed is low, the pressure is high. Now, what the fuck does that mean? Like, seriously, in a real world application, what does that mean? Well, I have a little uh, screen grab here from one of... Uh, is it going to be lewd? From one of Cherno's animes that's available on his website. What? No, dude, why? Uh, why? Well, because I need to explain how it works. And I forgot to take it out of the frickin' printer. <laughs> Whoa, I'll be right back. Have a hand, chat. Hi. You lost yeah, it? no, I got it. Okay. So this is a this is a screen grab from one of Cherno's anime av available on his uh, website. So this is it right here, and I will explain what? how Bernoulli's principle works. Fuck have, off. <laughs> have you guys ever uh, wondered why when you are in the shower, the shower curtain clings to your naked legs. Have you ever wondered? Well, this is what happens. <sighs> Water droplets at high speed go down your naked body like this. Do you have to specify naked body? Well, you wouldn't wear clothes in the shower, would you? 
And what happens, because of Bernoulli's principle, high speed equals low pressure. So the pressure around your body is lower than the pressure on the outside of the shower curtain because the air there is uh, not moving. So it actually sucks the shower curtain onto your legs. So there you go. There's one example of Bornelius. Bornelli. Who is it? I'm a little tired. So this is not going to be too great, this presentation. Bernoulli's principle. But how does that affect other stuff? The interesting thing is that this principle of science also applies to air. Now, this is very important for a very simple reason. It is the reason that airplanes actually stay in the sky most of the time. Unless I'm in them, then they crash. Yeah, then they crash. So I've got a little bit of a, a, like a thing here. So I've taken a picture of air. There it is, right there. Uh, so that's what uh, air yeah. looks like. That's, that's what air looks nice like. Look. If you want to like, like we can, we can enlarge it a little bit and you can see, you can see, you can see that it's actually made up of molecules, right? I think you can see that. Now, if that's we, what my skin looked like when I had the chicken <laughs> except probably not blue. Yeah. I hope not blue, but if we enlarge that a little bit more using an electron microscope, <laughs> you can actually see that air are oh my god air is actually little chur fairies so just in case you're thinking yes it is true if you breathe there are thousands of little chur fairies inside of you they're everywhere so that's what actual air looks like so here's the the quantum thank you for the sub quantum <laughs> so here is the actual way an airplane stays in the sky. Uh, you have airflow over a wing, which is shaped with a bottom shape of a flat surface, and the top shape is <coughs> curved, which means that the air molecules or the chur fairies that are flying in the air uh, have to travel a further distance to meet these air molecules and at the same time, that means they have to travel faster. And we know that because they have to travel faster, they have less, little, little, less pressure. So there is an upward force on the bottom of the wing. There you go. That is how an airplane stays in the sky. And that is the basic explanation of a, the Bernoulli principle. Hey, Felipe, thank you for the sub as well, man. Okay, so that was that. Love you. So now you guys are probably wondering, what the F does that have to do with video games? Well, let me tell you. I have been, like, dying to tell you this. Like, seriously. But I haven't been able to tell you until just recently. What? Hello? Oh, go away. <laughs> go away. Oh, no, I've got an audience. <laughs> um, I had to keep it a secret, even from Cherno. Uh, six months ago, actually, it was seven months ago, I was in Winnipeg, and I received an email. Uh, I got a lot of emails from customers at that time. Didn't know all of them. Uh, didn't really care about a lot of the emails. I get one from... A Todd Howard. No idea who the hell that was. I checked the return, and it is from Bethesda Gaming Studios. I'm going, what the hell? Unbelievable. I'm, like, super excited. Turns out that Twitch had been requested to provide the names of a couple of gamers that were a little unusual, just to maybe come up with a weapon idea for Fallout 4. And... I am definitely unusual. Uh, I'm just starting to play video games, and I'm 53 years old, so I definitely qualified for the unusual part. I don't usually answer surveys and shit like this, but this was amazing. 
And the funny thing was, I had actually already in my head invented a weapon for a video game. I loved the gravity gun in Fallout 2. Fallout 2. Half-Life 2. What the hell? In Half-Life 2. And so I used the physics principle of high speed, low pressure to come up with the Bernoulli force gun. So this was my thinking. This is what I sent back to them. Using... Oh, I actually did do a little bit of a sketch for you guys here. So this is it right here. So air in, air out at super high velocity. The way it works, you have like a chur fairy right here. You aim the gun above the fairy's head. You can make it float. See, because the low air pressure, high air pressure. If you actually aim the gun you aim the gun at the bottom of the ferry, you get this, squashed by air pressure. Is that cool or what? So I was so excited. You know what? <laughs> nothing is confirmed, but nothing is confirmed, but there's a really good chance that my gun will actually be in Fallout 4 Arsenal. And it is the TP gun! <laughs> yeah! Yay! Uh, there you go. Wow. I'm gonna get sued by, by Bethesda. Are you gonna get the airline? Oh, by Ellen. Oh, but yeah, that's where I got the idea from. So, yeah. Yeah, that was your question. So, that was it, guys. It took a little less than half an hour, but uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> it just goes through a lot of ammo really quickly. That was one roll of toilet paper. And it does actually use the Bernoulli principle in the fact that it creates low air pressure above the roll of toilet paper and the air pressure underneath uh, blows the uh, blows the toilet paper upwards. <coughs> All right, that's pretty good. There we go. You're great at playing with Play-Doh. <laughs> I guess I should never doubt the chur dad. <laughs> that is what I have learned this is today. It, actually, right here. So it's a yard blower with, uh, if you ever want to build one, because they are so freaking cool for TPing your neighbor's trees uh, with a paint roller taped to it at the right uh, spot. And then the toilet paper roll goes there and you just hit the, you hit the, the control and you get super fast air moving across the top of the, the roll. So. I don't know. There were just a bunch of faces. Pock champ faces. Yeah, whatever that, that means it was hype.